It's about damn time. That is blasphemous. What's happening, everybody? This is the Philly Experience Podcast, your home for all things Philly sports. Alongside Chris Thacker, Tanner Martin, and Tyre Hood, I'm your host, Max James. As always, it's great to be with you on this Thursday. Again, obviously, every Thursday here in the studio. Uh, of course, Eagles preseason opener tonight against the Tennessee Titans. We'll dive into things we're looking forward to and uh, competition around uh, some of the players that are on the team. And also touch on some Phillies, man. They're just they're still in the same spot. They were We were here last week. They're still in the same spot. They I'm were sick of this. 59 and 55 overall record. They're still somehow tied for the second wild card spot. So we'll touch on that and maybe some more. But uh, first, T, the floor is yours. Let's go. Eagles talk. All going right. Y'all know what today it is. Guess what day it is, y'all. Guess what day it is. Thursday. The 8th. Really? Sorry. You just killed the vibe. All kinds of crazy. You asked me what day it was, and it's Thursday the 8th, August. Yeah, but what's happening today? Oh, it's Eagles preseason. There you go. I don't care that it is preseason. Man, look. All right. So, let's get it straight off the bat. Now, the unofficial depth chart was released, and on offense, of course, starting quarterback Carson Wentz, backup quarterback Nate Sutfield. Behind him is Cody Kessler, and behind him is Clayton Thorson. Yeah. Apparently, nice. apparently <laughs> Sutfield has now picked it up in training camp, so now he's looking like, you know, I kind of sort of, I guess, a backup quarterback. Well, I mean, duh. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but he's got some big shoes to fill. I'm just saying. Like, come on now. It, it's going to be hard to replace the guy who he's replacing. I'm just saying. And who is that? We're not going to mention him by name. All right? Leave it alone. It's Nick Foles. <sighs> didn't, I just, didn't I just say leave it alone? I just specifically said The greatest leave, Eagles quarterback of all time? But I specifically said leave. It's Nicholas. <sighs> Thank you, me. <laughs> just, all right. Anyway, to the running backs. We have Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders at number two, Sproles at three, Clement four. Now, this is interesting. Smallwood is ahead of Josh Adams in the depth chart. But once again, this is unofficial. So, yeah, I'll take it with a grain of salt. Smallwood ain't. Uh, Smallwood doesn't do anything for me. Wide receivers is the obvious. We have Alshon Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson, Nelson Aguilar, J.J. Arcega Whiteside at the number four spot ahead of Mac Hollins. And um, at tight end, of course, Zach Gertz, uh, Dallas Goddard, Richard Rogers. Left tackle, Jason Peters, Andre Dillard backing him up. Left guard, Siamalu Wisniewski. Uh, center, Kelsey Wisniewski's backing up Kelsey. I, I, from what I'm hearing, I'm not particularly caring about that. At right guard, you have, we have Brandon Brooks, and backing him up is Halapulavati Vitae. And at right tackle, of course, the big old 65, Lane Johnson. Now on, de- now on to the defense. Oh, boy. Here we go. At defensive end, we have Derek Barnett and Vinnie Curry backing him up. And backing him up is Sharif Miller. At the other side, Brandon Graham, Josh Sweat. All because Joe Osman tore his ACL in training camp. So now, once again, I didn't have that much confidence in the defensive ends from the beginning of the season. But now we need to look at some defensive ends. Because now we're lacking in depth. Just saying. At defensive tackle... Of course, Fletcher Cox, Hassan Regway, and at the other tackle position, Malik Jackson and Tim Jernigan. Um, middle linebacker, Nigel Bradham, Paul Worldlow's backing him up. Outside linebacker was Kamu Grugier Hill until he went down with his injury. Now it's uh, Nathan Gary. And at the other spot, it's Zach Brown. And backing him up is LJ Fort. Corners. Now this is interesting. They're, they're putting Avante Maddox on the outside and Rasul Douglas is going to back him up. And the the person that's last on the depth chart at, at the corner position, Jalen Mills. So like I said, <laughs> Jalen Mills ain't looking too hot right about now, especially with these young corners coming in and proving what they can do. At the other corner spot, Ronald Darby is still the slated starboard. starter. Behind him is Sidney Jones, and behind him is Cravion LeBlanc. At safety, they have Rodney McLeod starting. Of course, the other safety, Malcolm Jenkins. Uh, special teams, kicker, obvious, Jake Elliott, punter, Cameron Johnson, long snapper, we don't care. <laughs> I'm just saying. Kick returner, interesting. They have Miles Sanders as the starting kick returner, backing him up as Corey Clement. 
and starting punt returner Darren Sproles. So, okay, first off, I am very upset that you didn't put any respect on Rick Lovato's name. Yeah, yeah okay, sure. I, and uh, secondly, just just to explore it, I brought up a list of uh, defensive ends who are still free agents. All right, I mean, let's hear him. There's probably a reason they're still free agents. Okay, but uh, Michael Johnson. Tell me if any of these guys do anything for you. Okay. No. no it does nothing. No. William Hayes. Nope. Mitch. Your your Ryan, I, I feel like I'm messing that mm. up. Mm. No, Mm-mm. no, none of these are. Uh, They're not moving the needle at all. Uh, Derek Shelby. Nope. Dion Jordan. Nope. Sadly. Uh, and I Zach, had high hopes for him when he was drafted. Zach Moore. That's not okay. There's anything. probably not a reason <laughs> to even look at this because <laughs> look, I'm just trying to explore a way that the Eagles can. Attempt to fix this problem without losing any assets. Now, if you were in the shoes of the general manager, what would you do? Um, because you know you're smarter than all of us. I'm not. See, why do you why do you start off with that? That's not true. Why do you keep saying that? To, that is not true at to, all. To rile you up. That's not true. I'm just saying. It sure is. <sighs> so anyway, what I would do is. There is one disgruntled outside linebacker slash defensive end that plays for the Houston Texans, and his name is the Davian Clowney. Okay. And I would start exploring options. Now, you keep saying that, you know, we don't have assets to give away at this point. Look, you're trying to go for a championship. I'm – okay. The, the, okay, the Flyers did this to me, okay? I have such an issue with giving away assets because of what I have seen happen – when they the metaphorical crap fell on their face years later when they give away all these assets, okay, that's why I am the way I am. Okay. That's why, why I'm like, nah, the I'm sicko. Not, I'm not. Yes, I'm not willing to give away no second round pick for someone but, who might stick around for a year or two. But we're talking about one of the best pass rushers, and we're talking Maybe. about a guy who you can potentially keep. I mean, come on, look at our defensive end position. T, we thought, only have one young, reliable guy, and that's Derek Barnett. T, one reliable young guy. I thought you hated the word potential. I do hate the word potential. So, but here's the thing. I want a guy who's going to stick around. But Jadavian Clowney has proven himself. I'm looking also for proven guys. Yes. Okay. I yes. can convince him to stay. I got a Super Bowl ring that I can show him. That doesn't have wow. dust on it. But the, <laughs> You're go. going to show him a Super Bowl ring. You know what he's going to say? Uh oh, Wow, one who, ring. Who got that for you? Yeah, compared to the no rings that he has. <laughs> Just who, putting that out. Who was the one leading the way to that Super Bowl championship? <sighs> He's going to say, where's that guy? <sighs> all right, T, so you were naming all these players on the depth chart. Mm-hmm. Which player do you guys think has the most to prove? Let's start off with Max. <laughs> most to prove? Mm. I mean, I, I guess you got to look at Carson Wentz. I mean, he's come back off the injury, the back injury, and, and then the ACL. So I just, I don't think he's going to play tonight. But I think he's got to prove, man, that he's healthy and he's able to play a full sixteen game season, and uh, you know, be the guy to take this team to the uh, to the Super Bowl. All right, Chris, what about you? I mean, I feel like it's a bit of a cop out answer. Just agree with Max because he is a hundred percent right. But a guy I would like to see attempt to whittle his way into this uh, roster. Is Mac Collins because mm, I that's a good one. the the flat yeah. the bit the bits and pieces I've seen in Mac Collins I think he could be a great deep threat for I us. He's riddled so, with injuries. I know this time. I know maybe we'll be able. To I would see. I would like to see what he can do as well as JJ Arcega Whiteside. My vote uh, will be on the defensive side. Y'all know I'm a defensive guy. I'm going to go with Ronald Darby. I'm going to go with Ronald Darby because now we finally have a plethora of young up and coming corners who can and have the potential to take his spot. He's only on a one-year contract coming off of a torn ACL. If he doesn't come in this year and prove that he has some sort of value to this team, he's gone. It is and, a- and there's the potential that he still can be benched because, like I said, Sidney Jones is backing him up. Right. So Sidney Jones is a, um, a second-round pick who really should have been a first if it wasn't for his Achilles injury coming out of Washington. So, I mean, look. He, yeah, yeah, Ronald Darby, he's he's on a hot seat. I hate to say it, but, I mean, he's not my favorite corner. But, you know, I, I'm still hoping because he does have some kind of skill at that corner position. He just can't tackle. Right. That's my only issue in this defense. So, I mean, that's, I, yeah. I want to hear Tanner's answer. Yeah, for me, it would, <laughs> besides the obvious, I Carson Wentz. See, I see that smile. What is it? What is it? <laughs> um, I think. 
Nate Sudfeld. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there we he go. He has a lot to prove. Is We've it? only really, we haven't really seen him throw the ball. Thanks. And when he does <laughs> throw the ball, <laughs> usually it's not caught. But last season we saw him, you know, against the Redskins, he ran into the end zone. And he only had a couple drives, a and couple the, plays. And the screen pass. But, yeah, I mean, we he, mentioned last week. he has a lot of responsibility being behind someone that has suffered a lot of injuries. And at one point during the season, we're going to need to see Nate Sudfeld in under center. Uh, and will he be able to control himself and be able to? I mean, yeah, like like it was said, he has big shoes to fill. As much as you don't want to admit it's that, not take, even It's I not just, even that. It's not even he has to fill in the shoes for Nick Foles because we now we have high standards. But we just need him to be able to be an actual quarterback back there <laughs> when we need somebody besides Carson Wentz. Not an artificial Although quarterback. If, if he's injured or if it's just week 17 and we just don't want to play Carson Wentz. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. <sighs> well, we ain't got no choice. Nate Suffeld is the backup quarterback and apparently he's playing better than the rest of the quarterbacks that's been in camp, including Cody Kessler and your fourth round draft pick. Clayton Thorson. Clayton Thorson. Who has been throwing more picks than Vegas odds. All right? <laughs> I'm just saying. Than right? Daniel Jones? <laughs> I'm just saying. So it's not looking good. It's, it's, look, so if Nate Suffield doesn't do anything, I'm I'm officially scared. Well, what are you guys looking forward to tonight? Do you guys Are you guys watching just for entertainment value? Are you guys trying to figure out, you know, you're looking at certain positions and trying to figure out who's going to be cut, who's... You know, gonna stick out and like may basically catch the you know coach's attention. Like, what are you guys looking for? What I'm particularly looking at, I'm looking at that defensive line because you know, like I said in previous episodes, we rotate our defensive line heavy, so we need those backup guys to be just as big as contributors as the starters. To be honest, that you do really isn't the starter on the defensive line. You know, as as much as they rotate. So I'll be looking at, you know, how they pass rush and, you know, how how they um, um, are disciplined in their in their gaps responsibilities. So that's the one thing that I'll be looking at for tonight. You know, I'm a film junkie. So now for injuries, is this something you guys are worried about this early on in the season? Uh, we have uh, Grugere Hill, Fletcher Cox is getting off that um, foot surgery. Derek Barnett, Nigel Bradham, Rodney McLeod, Jalen Mills. Ronald Darby and LeBlanc, which player? All players are injured right Fletch, now or nursing a surgery. Fletch should be ready by week <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, he, he will be. The Kamal Grugier Hill kind of, kind of takes us a step back because I know they were really high on him at that linebacking position and also on special teams as well. So that that injury kind of you know takes us you know takes us a step back a little bit. Um, the Jalen Mills injury, I ain't worried about. Ronald Darby, eh, not too much. Um, um, we the good part about it is with with most of those injuries, they're either going to be ready by week one, or we have guys that are going to step up and you know do just as good, if not better, than I mean, the guy that they're I mean, replacing. Let me ask you this, just because you know these guys way better than I do. Uh, guy, guys like Nathan Gary or T.J. Edwards are these guys that you have. T.J. Edwards is a very underrated guy. I believe he came out of Wisconsin. Um, he does have some fans um, amongst the Eagles reporters. Um, he's a hard-hitting linebacker, and you know he has turned some heads um, a little bit in camp, so I'm intrigued to see him. Um, Nate Gary, we drafted him in the fourth round a couple of years ago. So, you know, this is his opportunity to really seize that linebacking position. Now, this is a guy who came out of college playing safety, and they moved him to linebacker. What? And the reason for that is that, you know, everybody's offense is basically spread out now. So the more defensive backs that you have on the field now, the better. But it's good to have that guy who has that safety experience, who has that safety speed and range, but also still has the size and the strength of a linebacker. Hence the reason why Nate Gary is still here. They believe that he can develop into that hybrid guy, such as a Mark Barron. Now, uh, I mean, this ju- this is just me playing hypotheticals, but do you think they move him to linebacker because of his speed? Maybe he's not fast enough to be a safety. It, it is a factor, but when you have when you're a safety, you have to have some kind of speed. Yeah, you you have to have some kind of speed to, to play safety to be able to play the range. So moving him to linebacker, that's even the more better because. 
in Jim Schwartz's scheme, the linebackers are responsible for running sideline to sideline. They are responsible for the outside, for the outside of the gaps. And so they need that speed. They need to be able to tackle well. They need to be able to range sideline to sideline. They need to be able to cover. That's the main responsibility of a Jim Schwartz linebacker. And then to answer your question, Max, about uh, what we're looking forward to tonight. Yeah, that question, remember? <laughs> Uh, I, I'm always looking forward to seeing the rookies. So, Andre Dillard, I want to see how, how he does. I'm assuming he's going to get a couple snaps yeah, as he, well. Oh, he's going to he's gonna play most of He's going to play probably most of the night. And also, uh, Miles Sanders. I'm hearing all the reports about how much he's impressing at mm-hmm. camp. So You guys know they had their um, public practice uh, this past Sunday. And yeah. the, a video went viral of him going to a hole and was blocked. And he made this huge jump cut to to run to the outside and run for what would have been a first down, and it's been going viral. And here's this, here's the thing with people, all right? They're already comparing him to Shady because you know that jump cut. Let's everybody, let's slow down, all right? Can't do that yet. Yeah, let's slow down. Let's let the kid develop. I don't like putting labels on players saying they're going to be like this, they're going to be like that. Let the kid develop in his own time. The only player Miles Sanders is going to be is Miles Sanders. Yes, exactly. I couldn't have said it better. I completely agree. Let the kid develop into his own game. Stop comparing these players to other players because you want because you've seen them do one thing that another player does. <laughs> I'm like seriously, like it's funny when Shady first started doing those you know huge cuts. Everybody started comparing him to Barry Sanders. Now that's a very good comparison, but I wanted Shady to be Shady. I, I wanted him shady to just play shady. his game. He so is. you know. I'm just saying, just right. stop putting these labels on players. That's all I'm asking. Since we're comparing players, let's compare quarterbacks and how much they get paid. Okay. Oh, here <laughs> we go. The highest paid quarterbacks list was, was released, the top 10 average yearly in millions. And at the top is Russell Wilson with mm. 35, then Tom Brady with 35. Well deserved. Uh, Big Ben, 34. Aaron Rodgers, 33.5. Carson Wentz, 32. Mm-hmm. And then under is Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, Jimmy G with 27.5. Matthew Stafford with 27. And Drew Brees all the way down at number 10 with 25. Which player do you think doesn't belong on that list or which player should be moved up and paid more? Uh, can, can I just start with Jimmy G? The, all that money is based off of, what, a seven-game Man, run? Ludicrous. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. and look, I get it. He was he was injured last year, and he was supposed to be the guy to take over f- for Tom Brady. I mean, he was good enough for Tom Brady to be nervous and request him to be traded. So, and that's imagine not- having that kind of power. That's like some mafia stuff there. <laughs> but yeah, they, yeah, you guys are absolutely correct. They're playing. They're paying uh, Jimmy Garoppolo off of the potential that he showed. And the fact that he was a second round overall pick. The thing about it is, we only we've really only seen a little bit of him. Yeah, I, I think he only has maybe twelve games of experience. Right, and you know when you pay when you commit to a quarterback, and Max, we we went into this <coughs> last week. It don't matter who you are. This is a perfect example right here. It does not matter who you are, how much game experience you have. If you even show just the inkling of potential, a team will throw money at you. I th- yeah, I think they paid Jimmy G to. Uh... You know, I mean, I should say they, they paid him for the future, not not for the now. You know, I think that the Niners are going to be good in a couple of years down the road, and they really want Garoppolo to be coming into his prime, and that's probably why they gave him the money. But the guy I think doesn't belong on the list is Matt Stafford. I mean, a guy, he's been in the league a while, and he hasn't really – I haven't seen him, you know, go deep in the playoffs once. You know, so I don't think he deserves that money. But, again, like you said, the guy is serviceable in this league yep. for many years, and that's probably why – he got the contract. Yep. Kirk Cousins is I mean, also on this list and pretty high up at seven. I mean, to to just vouch for Matt Stafford, he literally has blades of grass for an offensive line. <laughs> His team's getting better. It, it, yeah, but it, kind of. Yeah, but that offensive line is just as bad as Eli's offensive line. It's like Swiss cheese, man. Right, and also Tom Brady's at number two. If if you guys didn't hear, Whatever. he got a two year extension. Whatever. Worth seventy million dollars. So Brady will be I with us two more seasons. <laughs> Max, I got a bone to pick with you, man. I, how <laughs> dare you? How dare you, how Max? Dare you look celebrate. If I can come to Max's defense, even though I completely disagree with what he said. By the way, Max sent a text to the group text uh, when Tom Brady got his extension, said T B twelve forever. I then responded saying, Max, you're blocked. 
<laughs> Which I obviously meant jokingly because I would never block That's Max. That's ridiculous. But like Max said before we even started the show, he's just paying his respects to the greatest quarterback of all time. <laughs> That's all I was doing. Gotta respect the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else on that list, though, honestly, Matt, the Matt Ryans of the world, the Aaron Rodgers of the world, they all deserve it. I mean, they're all top yeah. tier quarterbacks yeah. in the league. Okay. I don't come. Aaron Rodgers and Matt Ryan, look, I'm sorry. They are not in the same tier of quarterback. Matt Ryan has been really good. I mean, I get it. His team hasn't really done much, on it, especially highlighted by that uh, blown They're Super do Bowl. This season. But I think, man, he's put up great numbers his whole career. Over 4,000 yards passing, a majority of the seasons he's been in the league. So I like it. I, I, like, uh, I like his game. I think with Julio there and the, and the talent surrounding him, Devontae Freeman's healthy this season. I know Tevin Coleman's gone, but they do have um, Calvin Ridley. They do have Austin Hooper, who's been a pretty good tight end for him. So I think I think the Falcons are going to have a pretty decent season. Man, that that is easily still one of the most depressing sports games I've ever watched. I think they that got a good shot. I, I'm sorry to cut you off, Chris. I think they got a good shot to beat the Eagles in week two. Whatever. At home, <laughs> they're at home. They're at home uh, on Sunday night football in week two. So at, well, huh, that'll be a fun game. It's uh, at Atlanta, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, on it's the, at it's Atlanta. On the road. Yeah. They, they do have a chance. Yeah, I think. Julio Jones has been proven to be our a pain in the rear most end. challenging uh, wide receiver Achilles to face heel. the Eagles. Unless you put Jalen Mills on him. Ah, jeez. <laughs> then he'll I, really become a pain in the I rear I think the Falcons' defense got healthier this season, too. I know they lost a couple of starters in the beginning of last season. I think they lost one this year, too. Um, I think Wilcox was his last name. Somebody, something like that. But but I know he was a starter, and he got hurt. So, But, but they do have a couple other talented guys. On that defense that they're getting yeah, back. Yeah, their defense is really underrated, man. I like I like the way they play defense. They play defense as a unit, all right. And I like how they set some things up. Like they'll show they'll show that they're going that they might bring pressure on one side, but then they'll fall back into coverage. But then you'll see the same look again, maybe from the other side, and they'll actually send a pressure because you think they're going to drop back. I like the way they play defense, Dude, man. Their defensive scheme. I'm completely drawing a blank on the guy's name. The the. The pass rusher on the Falcons who got like seven sacks one in one game. I forget his name. Was that um oh, Adrian Claiborne? That's right, Adrian Claiborne. Is he still there? Um, uh, so. let me look that up. I don't think so. Wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> I just remember he kept sacking Dak Prescott that one that and, one game. Like, and it was beautiful seven times. Like like you said, Chris. Yes. Thank um, you. it was uh it was fun to watch. That was his one game. He's where still there. He stood. Oh, yeah, is he still there? Yep. Uh, yeah, he really stood out in that game. Yes, thank God. Yes, yep. still there. Thirty-one years old. Shoot. Hey. There's no, nothing like seeing the Cowboys being humbled. I love exactly. it. Exactly. You know what? And speaking of the Cowboys, boy, this might be an easy division. It just might be. Right, I you mean, don't want to say that I, yet. Look, I, okay, I, I'm, uh, with, I'm with Tanner. I because said just might. I, I, I'm still very hesitant because we are Philadelphia. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sometimes. You guys have got to get rid of that label. Some Look, sometimes. It just happens to us because we are Philadelphia. I know, but you right. got to get rid of that. But then again, Tanner, look look around the NFC East. Other than Saquon Barkley, what are the Giants going to do to us? The Giants? Yes. I'm starting with the Giants. Uh, oh, gosh. All I imagine when we face the Giants is Saquon hurdling us, slipping tackles, because we, as a team, could not tackle. Oh, I, We're not good at tackling. Man. I I I can see it already. I just can't wait for Zach Brown to just speak. Beer him. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> hope Zach Brown can still play. He's thirty-one years old now. Yeah, and, it, and, so not, and, and apparently he's not. He's not doing too hot. Isn't that a shame camp. that thirty-one is an old age in the NFL for a linebacker? Definitely. <laughs> well, it, well, once you hit the thirties, you're, you're really considered an old man in the NFL. Right. But see, uh, I know why you're saying the NFC East will be easier because Mr. I said might might. <laughs> Mr. Ezekiel Elliott and says he won't play in 2019 if the <laughs> Cowboys don't offer him the deal he wants. Man, let me tell you something right now, okay? If he does not play as a defensive uh, as a defensive minded person, I wouldn't even worry about their running their running backs. Okay, I would let my four up front guys handle their offensive line and their running back because the running backs behind Ezekiel Elliott, okay, they have Alfred. I think Alfred Morris is backing him up. Yeah, Alfred Morris. Say, like, at one point. Yeah, Alfred Morris doesn't doesn't intimidate me at all. So now all I got to do is worry about they pass him game. Now I can drop people in the coverage. I can drop my linebackers a little deeper. I, I if I want to, I can blitz the crap out of Dak, and that's the one thing he does not like. Dak Prescott is one weakness is that he does not like to get hit. He does not like to get touched. It's something about a defensive player being around him. 
he gets skittish in that pocket. I have never seen a quarterback react like that to pressure like I've seen with Dak Prescott. At running back, the Cowboys have Alfred Morris, Darius Jackson, and Jordan Chun. Yeah, they behind, uh, Yeah, who? <laughs> just yeah, saying. I, I was about to say the same. Yeah, and, 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 and I'm just saying. And as far as the Redskins are concerned, unless Dwayne Haskins like blows everyone's mind, which is actually he start. They got him third on the depth chart. Do they now? They're starting Colt. Ma- they're Col- an official depth Col- chart. Colt McCoy. They're starting Colt McCoy. I okay. Yeah, I clearly missed that. Yeah, um, he, I mean he's been there for a while. Colt McCoy, and then Darius Geis and. Ryan Kerrigan. I can't name any other Redskins. I player. mean, what happened to Case Keenum? He sort of just dropped off. Yeah, there's. It's funny what one there hot was playoff a, run yeah, can do was, to you. Yeah, there was a lot of hype <laughs> behind him, but I mean, not even getting that second spot. I think after that Minnesota miracle, people really started to realize that uh, he was a decent quarterback, and in the following season, he was horrible. And I think so, he is. Like, well, with then the, with the even, yeah. even the next game against the Eagles. Oh yeah, true. Like I, I said, I mean, hey, but not, f- nothing went the Vikings way in that game. Yeah. Except yeah. for the first drive of the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the first drive of the game. I thought it was over for us. Yeah. When, well, after we had that pick six, the game was yeah. over. Yep. I mean, he, he's a decent quarterback, but I wouldn't start a friend. I wouldn't start him. He's not a franchise quarterback, but he's a back he's a back quarterback. That's what he is. And teams are trying to treat him as if he's a starter. Yeah, the he's, thing he's is, not. he thinks he's a starter now. I because mean, you, of the things that he's done. But you have to have that mindset. Like, you can't come in and say, yeah, I'm a backup quarterback or I'm a third-string quarterback. Nick if Foles he does, can, and I, he's fine with that. Well, yeah, but Nick Foles. Nick Foles got some jewelry, though. <laughs> yeah, he does have that. I wish Dwayne I Haskins was starting. I think he's going to be a good good quarterback in this league in a couple of years. I get the whole thing where the, the Redskins don't want to throw him out there on day one with not a lot of talent around him. But I think he's going to be good in a couple of years if the Redskins can build a team. But I like what you're doing, fall for it, Redskins. I mean, I mean, I mean, right now, like Colt McCoy, the Redskins are just. I don't know if they're like trying to give up the season before it starts or. But but no, I think. And again, again, hey, Colt, Colt McCoy over Case Keenum. I remember like, a few seasons ago, Colt McCoy was doing pretty well. Yeah. I haven't seen him do anything since he was at Texas. No, he, he had um, a few good games. <laughs> that is true. Maybe four seasons. The only ago. thing I'm against with them starting um, Dwayne Haskins is the fact that he's a 20 year old kid. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm, yeah, I agree with you. I don't. I don't think I start him either. But I'm saying I wish, as a football fan, I want. I would like to see him play. And I guess yeah, as a football fan, I fresh faces. Yeah, like I understand. You know, but it, he's a 20 year old kid, and let's make sure that his head is in the right place. Guy is young. He really hasn't played the quarterback position that long. He didn't play quarterback that long in Ohio State. Really? I'm just saying. Mm-mm. He wasn't. He wasn't their starter. In the That's beginning. how you know I don't pay that much attention to college football, <laughs> which I probably should. Yeah, and this is the future we're talking about, man. Look, I, no, I'm I'm finna go to high school games this year. A lot of them. You know why? Future. Future. <laughs> you're, you're you're telling me weird some is weird. <laughs> That's, now that's sick, all right? Big T sitting I up mean, in the bleachers all by himself. I mean, he's this got his, gonna be a star one. He's got day. his binoculars <laughs> out, scouting everybody. I mean, I was thinking it, but Tanner said it for me. I was What I mean, is going on back there? <laughs> yeah, T, what are you doing? No, but yeah, I was about to say, like some dude from whatever high school around here mm-hmm. is going to be the next NFL star. Hey man. This, this is where it all begins. Hey, you're not wrong, but how many high schoolers really make it to the NFL? That's where it starts. I mean, there has to have been some because look yeah. at the NFL. Yeah. <laughs> you think look, these guys didn't go to high I'm school? <laughs> I mean, I mean, look, tease. there's something you got to understand. Rick Lovato, the guy that you whose name you refuse went to, to high say. School. The long snapper. <laughs> yeah, hey, once upon a time, he went to high school. He was probably the stud of his football team. Very true. And now he's the long snapper for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, he's so. making more money than I am while I'm sitting here struggling to pay for college and on the airwaves with you guys. You should have been a better football player. I know at my personal high school. Brandon McManus went to North Penn, then to Temple, and now he Boom. he has a ring. Consider the Broncos. The, and Matt Ryan man. went to go to North Penn. Uh, Matt Ryan didn't go to North Penn, but he was from around. Yeah. The, yeah. the only professional athlete that I know of, because I went to Satterton, was um, Jamie Moyer. Mm-hmm. Jamie Moyer, yeah, yeah. Jamie Moyer went to. My Saturday. parents used to watch him play. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know the, uh, Will, William Penn Charter. William School. Penn Charter. Okay. I know the big Whatever, guy. Whatever, Tanner. <laughs> shut up. I know North Penn thinks they're better than everyone. <laughs> I know the real, the, the big guy when I was coming up in high school, the big guy that everybody, you know, looked up to was Sharif Floyd, who ended up going to play for the Vikings. That's crazy. At defensive tackle. So that was the big guy that everybody really looked up to. I'm just glad I never had to go up against him and see him because that dude was just a monster. 
I'm just saying. Yeah. This just, is how you know we don't have a whole lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have no baseball team. <laughs> I mean, yeah, hey, we're, we're this close to becoming Pittsburgh to have, you know, being a city that has only three major sports Our teams. $330 million guy shaved his beard. Everyone went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to have fun. Again, that's how, where's the bamboo? We were only good with the bamboo in the beginning of the season. I, except we lost. Bunch of low like, life. <laughs> <laughs> that is still but one let, of the funniest yeah, let, things let's ever. Let's transfer over to baseball. Uh, do we if you to. insist, Tanner, yeah. whatever. Yeah. We should move it on to sports. Man, man, we don't have a sports baseball team anymore. I've been I've sport, calling for their heads now. A sports baseball team. Man, I'm just saying. Look, the only bright spot has been Corey Dickerson. And... Uh, as much as much as I love the dingers he's hitting, uh, no one's getting on base. Well, no, false. People are getting on base, but the the I almost said the Eagles, the Phillies <laughs> don't run run don't bring any runs in. Sorry, I'm angry. Chris, what? I'm just gonna go in and start off with first off game one against the Chicago White Sox. Oh. The Chicago White Sox, who which by the way are ranked the fourth worst team in the MLB. Hey, they're up and coming. Twenty seventh <laughs> overall. Maybe 28th. Hey, or, I, I mean, know. hey, they got Eloy Jimenez and that gelato guy who was the first one to 10 wins this year. Third worst team. And, Whatever. And they're, 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 pr- they're pretty bad. And we lost I the agree. series to the Chicago White Sox. Not even the best team in Chicago. Not even the best baseball team in Chicago. <laughs> so game one went into the 15 innings where Roman Quinn was put on the mound and Vince Velasquez <laughs> out in the outfield. <laughs> Vince had a diving catch, threw some guy out of the plate. He was doing better in the outfield threw than he does on the mound. Guy <laughs> some guy. <laughs> He's only a millionaire, Tanner. <laughs> Whoever that guy is. I, I, I'll be honest, I don't know. We were one away from closing the game, and a kid who has never batted in the MLB comes up and hits a single to tie the game. <laughs> Freaking kids. <laughs> All right, all right. Here's so where, here's where I come to the defense of uh, the Phils. <laughs> okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, well, oh, Nicasio t- was pitching, and we took him out, right? What a low life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Th- did Gabe Kapler get... Roman me? Quinn has thrown more balls on the mound than Tommy Hunter all season. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> God, that's so embarrassing. T- <laughs> Roman Quinn. Roman Quinn, eh? No, uh, to get Kapler get his positions mixed up, Roman Quinn's supposed to be the outfielder. Yeah, I Look, mean, Vince Velasquez was doing just fine. Oh, in the Vince outfield. Velasquez was great. I'm Imagine best. having a pinch fielder. The Imagine outfield having... wasn't the problem. No, it was. The problem was we didn't have enough guys. It in was the our bullpen. closer, Roman Quinn. <sighs> Not even that. It shouldn't have even went to that. This guy's coming over. His parents are all at the game. His first MLB at bat, and he cracks a single. And ties the game. Way to go, Spencer. It's funny like to me, too. Goal or something like that. I have that. no clue who the guy is. Oh All, right. My God. All right, Mr. Optimistic. Because it looked like you had something to say positive. <laughs> go for it. I don't recommend Go it. for it, man. <laughs> he said I well, don't recommend I mean, no. Well, I get. I got this stat. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, the Nietzsche's of the world are done. And uh, <laughs> Robertson's of the world are done. So uh, the stats haven't been great for the bullpen, obviously. But a lot of people are... Uh, Throwing this on Gabe, but <laughs> I think at the, at the end of the day, man, listen, Sir Anthony's oh, out, Nishek's out, Tommy Hunter's out. These guys were supposed to contribute. <laughs> this, uh, Chris hates Tommy Hunter, but listen, there's no th- 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 this team before hey, the season started with this bullpen. I'll reserve to Tommy Hunter eventually. Sorry, I interrupted. You I don't next. think you like Tommy Hunter that much. I don't. I think you disrespect Tommy Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> He's not your. Um, listen, Gabe Kapler has got his hands are tied here. Listen, he throws out Ranger Suarez, for example, the other night against the Diamondbacks, and obviously it doesn't work out too well. But you much rather have a Sir Anthony in that situation, or or a Nishak, or you know, some, David Robertson, even who we got like how many innings out of this year, like ten, not even ten. <laughs> I think like six. So no, it's just frustrating, and uh, I think you know the team that's coming on strong lately is the New York Mets. The New York Mets, Pete Alonso and his band of merry men. So I mean, the yeah, pit, the and your buddy, Max Muncy. Max, <laughs> Max Muncy's on the dot. What? Wait, wait, no. So I'm sorry. I'm thinking about somebody else. Ah, oh, T. Jeez. Well, yeah, I know. Uh, that's embarrassing. What? Cut yeah, that. Cut that. Somebody cut that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, why? We're gonna, do, we're, we're, we're gonna edit that out. You know the. <laughs> you wanna know the? Fu- I'm sorry. I'm just. Go ahead. Yanking the wheel out of your hands, man. <laughs> 
It's funny that you say that because I was talking to a friend of mine. I was like, you know who I could see being a freaking Met one day? <laughs> Max Muncie. Uh, here we go. Max, I hate you. D- there's going to be a time where Max Muncie hits a wall and he can't keep up with Cody Bellinger because Cody Bellinger is a stud. And he <laughs> and he's going to become a Met. And him and it's Pete an Alonso. You know, Mets. Wa- linking arms together, hitting dingers, and winning divisions. I can see. The Mets are a good I, team. Yes, so yeah. the they Mets are going to be ahead of us. The Mets, they got Stroman. Yeah. They got Syndergaard. They got DeGrom. Yep. Their pitching is stacked. And Pete Alonso is on another, another level. I mean, they the guy's us, hitting homers every they night. They gave us Jason Vargas because they didn't want him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, think about that. Vargas didn't pitch too bad last night. Did, did, Five innings, gave up four runs. I mean, that's kind of what you expect. This record's out of six and six. But we, we had two hits basically the whole night. Oh, and two with us. <laughs> well, again, come on. Look look at that game. The ga- fast, Roman bro. Quinn was on the mound for his game where he pitched the first one. What's he hit the first batter? <laughs> oh, jeez. Counts 0 and 2. Was um, that last Because I didn't see the game last night. Yeah, and I, last and night as soon as the game started, I just see a text from you. <gasps> Vargas sucks! <laughs> I was like, gee, I wonder what happened. At, at this point, as Philly fans, I think, as Phillies Philly, fans, Philly? I think we're just done with the Phillies. Uh, oh, please let me know. I can't be done. We're still I a wild know, card team. I know, Hold I know. On. Uh, Mr. I'll have to Mr. dust off my Phillies okay. jersey. On. On OT, closet. don't I'm bring out. the game let me, on the 15th, OT, so. don't bring out your jersey, your Eagles jersey yet. Uh, yeah, okay. whatever. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I want to crap. explore these other wild card teams that are around us because Matt, while Max is right, we are holding the second wild card spot as of right now. But I want to read some of these teams to you. We, the Brewers. Ahead of us, two games ahead of us are the Washington Nationals. And then the Brewers are right there with us. The St. Louis Cardinals are right there. The New York Mets. Arizona Diamondbacks? Yeah, man. Wait a second. That, yeah. Last week, I could have sworn they were like seven games back. Now they're a game and a half. Oh, my God. Uh, and the San Francisco Okay, how many of these teams are going to eat the Phillies alive? Mm. The Nationals, the Brewers. Yep, all of the above. The, yeah. And then don't even get me started with the divisional leaders, the Braves. <sighs> The Cubs and the Dodgers. Listen, the Giants. What's we got a Giant now? series. You know, we're taking this one game at a time. The D-back series didn't go our way. But listen, we got the Giants coming up. They're not a great team. If we can sweep them, we're right back in this thing. <laughs> listen, I hope I we got hope Noah I, on the mound tonight. The, yeah, our only pitcher. That I wins hope us after games. I said all this stuff, I regret saying it and I uh, bite my tongue. Because I hope the Phillies prove us wrong. But I, I hope you're right. But I now, don't see it happening. Yeah. I don't see it happening. What we, teams are better than us? You can't point to any of those teams and say that they're better than us. Straight but, up. But they are. <laughs> Milwaukee's Milwaukee, what do they have? I mean get I got the, they get they excuse me, they have Yelich. They have All right, they in have my Yelich. opinion the second best baseball player in the world. Wow. They have yeah. Yelich and, and I get their bats are their pets are pretty good. Mustakis is okay. Kane I mean, has been. I understand pretty that good. their pitching is not their awesome. Pitching sucks. You know, their Just bullpen besides Josh money. Hader. Grandal's, oh, yeah, he's good. No, 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 you're right. You're right. Grandal's yeah, Grand, good. Grandal's good. But look at our team. Bryce, Reese, JT. I mean, we can start naming guys out, On too. On paper, our if team you wanna, looks great. If Bryce you wanna, Harper. I'm channeling my entertainer. Wow. <laughs> no. Br- look, okay. Where is Jay Bruce? Bry- Bryce, Har- Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper. Oh, boy, here we go. Some tell me this is going to turn into a race. Is Jay Bruce injured? Bru- yeah, he's injured. Yes, he's injured. He'll be Bryce back. Harper. Oh, this is going to turn into a rant. not Bryce Harper right now. <laughs> well, not now because he shaved his beard. He's not <laughs> Bryce Harper right now. <laughs> he's gone through seasons like this before. I get this that he hit new. a dinger last night in a 6-1 to one loss. Mm. It's about damn time. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? What? Is it just like <laughs> Bryce Harper... Is a roller coaster. He was going up and up and up. He was the best baseball player in the world in 2014 and 2015. And ever since then, just look at the numbers. The wins above it's replacement, ridiculous. the batting average, the home runs, the RBIs. He has 20 it's home go- runs. He's listen, just dude, listen, I was guys, watching guys, some game. I don't even guys, remember who was playing. It was the Twins Chris, and the Braves. That's what it was. Chris. Some dude. <laughs> Has more home runs than Bryce Harper. Uh-huh. Some dude I never heard of on the Twins. Chris, you got to relax over there, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, when we get Jay Bruce back. Be the back, voice of reason. When we get Jay Bruce back, we got Dickerson at the top. This is something Reese, we always hear, though. Harper, Hoskins, JT, 
Kingery. I mean, this lineup stretches out. Bruce, like you point listen, to these guys, and they got talent, listen, and they and we have. Con- I, me personally, I have confidence in them when they're at the plate. Max, this is something that I found you saying all season long: is wait till this guy comes back. back. Wait till Roman Quinn comes back. He's you. fast in the outfield, and then still nothing has improved. Can I? Can I please say well, something? Some. A big part of it was the bullpen, but I, none of those guys ever came back. That was the problem. I thought they were. They gonna came come back. back for a game, and then nothing. Got they hurt. got injured again. I just. Oh, man. Okay, can I? Okay. Go ahead, Chris. I want, Go I, want, ahead. I want to. I want to play a scenario that I've seen so many times this year. If there's something the Phillies have been great at, other than pitching bad and pissing me off, and pissing you off. If there's something that the Phillies are great at, it's getting on base and not driving runs in. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this episode of Bryce Harper at the plate. Or Andrew what? Knapp at the plate. <laughs> Do you like- <laughs> We're going backwards, damn it. Let's go. <sighs> Thank you, Doug. <laughs> Bryce Harper comes up to bat. Doesn't matter what game. Doesn't matter when. You just need to know that the bases are loaded. He'll take strike one. You know, like most batters do. He'll take strike one. All right, he adjusts his gloves. All right, he's looking up, just thinking. Second pitch comes, usually a breaking ball around the black. Strike two. Looks back at the umpire. Gosh darn up. You think that was a strike? Ugh. I'm down 0-2 now. I'm a $330 million man, and I'm down two strikes. And then pitch number three comes. It is some crappy out of the zone pitch that Bryce Harper thinks he's golfing, <laughs> and he strikes out. Our thirty million, three hundred thirty million dollar man. Sorry. To me, that's the same amount of money: thirty million and three hundred thirty million dollars. <laughs> Sorry. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that happen to Bryce Harper this year. Look, Bryce. Look, we lo- we do love you in Philly, but come on, mm. yeah, 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 it's you, ridiculous. you gotta carry your. We we you you have to be. You're the number three hitter. You are, in my opinion, the most important guy in the batting lineup. You you are the guy who is responsible for driving in runs. You piece of Swiss cheese. And when the bases are loaded, when we are down, who cares how much? And you're and one, two, three strikes you're out. Hmm. Bunch of low lifes. Thank you, Max. Thank you for agreeing <laughs> with me. Thank you. Stop playing those recordings. <laughs> hey, Bill. That's not my feelings at this time. <laughs> Our only. <laughs> there are only two guys that I have had next to no problems with this year, and that is Scott Kingery and JT Real Muto. I agree with you on that. Bryce, yeah. you are, what, the second richest man behind Mike Trout? Is that, isn't that it? Because mm. Mike Trout is in the $400 million range? Yeah, I think so. Phil- Philadelphia boy, by the way. Listen, if we you look at this team. We need you to come through for us. We, we brought you here to win World Series. <laughs> I'm not Plural. putting up with it. It's too, too much, much for sh- it's too much. I'm glad you're with me, Peter. I'm glad you're with me. All right. But listen, it, it, the surprising thing for me is when you look at this team and their overall stats for the season, they're pretty solid. I mean, the average for some players aren't there. But, like, Reese and Bryce, they have 20-plus homers. They're driving in a ton of runs. Hold on. Hold on, Chris. Hold on. <laughs> you're not taking the wheel out of my hand this time. Um, but And JT, JT's got around 275 average, which is pretty solid. Gene Segura around 280. Same thing with Cesar Hernandez, which surprised me as well. So I don't know what the deal is with us getting runners to third because we get them all and we just can't get them in. And I think we might start having to do some crazy things as far as you know suicide squeezes or safety. Like, I don't know. We just got to come up with some sort of uh, idea here. And again, this falls back on the manager. When we're not scoring runs, the manager needs to come through for us. Gabe Kapler needs to figure out how to get this team rolling because real, we have talent on this Real team. quick, Chris, before you get started, um, I seen a report this week that said that what regardless, regardless of what happens at the end of the season, management is reporting that Gabe Kapler will not be affected in any way, shape, or form. That's baloney. I agree. Chris, go ahead. Chris, Chris, I <laughs> want to hear what you're saying. That is baloney. I want to hear what you're saying, Chris. <laughs> okay, first off, this is why we need a camera in here. <laughs> Second off, 
okay, look, I know you said the batting averages have not been there. For for a few players, for a few players, for 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 a, Cause, a, cause a few. Okay, who is above two eighty? I pretty think sure Segura is Segura, and Cesar, Cesar is. JT's right there. JT's right there, and the only guy who is above three hundred is the guy that we just traded for, Corey Dickerson. Yes, that's, yep. that's okay. true. Oh, Scott Kingery might be above two eighty. I was about. To I think he's in the two seventies range. Anyway, uh-huh. doesn't matter. I, okay, fine. He's in the two eighties because he's one of the guys I'm not having a problem with. <laughs> All right, continue. <laughs> Look, I appreciate that you're trying to be optimistic, Max. I, you're a respectful man who is a Jerry, Derek Jeter fan as well as a Tom Brady Scott fan. Scott Kingery is 280. 280. Wow, uh, right on go. the nose. Right go. on the nose. That's that Tanner knowledge right there. But good enough is not good enough, Max. Look. I, I I know me sitting here and yelling isn't doing anything except making you guys laugh. Yeah, pretty much. But when our three hundred and thirty million dollar player is batting what two thirty? No, he's not batting two thirty. He's batting two forty nine. Give him a break. Two forty nine. <laughs> Get off his back. Like that's much of a difference. <laughs> he's got twenty bombs. He's hitting point one whatever because I'm not good at math more than. Anyway, how do you blame all this on Bryce Harper? Look, you can't do it. He, it's a team sport. You can't blame it on him. Listen, it's not his fault. He got paid three hundred thirty million dollars. It's no. Oh, if someone just oh, threw three three hundred no, million, didn't. if someone just threw thirty million dollars at me, I go thank you, bro. Look, it's a different story. Obviously, he wants that big, huge contract, yeah, and he's spending he, thirteen years here. When the second richest baseball player comes up to bat with the bases loaded, how many times? I would love to get a count, and. He, I'm sure. I'm sure at one point or another he's put a ball into play in that situation. But you need to get flipping runs in <laughs> when your richest, when the richest player on the team, the second richest in the league, can't come through for you. I understand that you're not going to get a hit every time unless you're Christian Yelich you. or Cody Bellinger or Mike Trout. But. Is Bryce, Bryce Harper is in that same tier of player. Well, maybe not anymore, but at one point he was. At one point he was above all those guys. Who was Christian? Stupid. Who was Christian Yelich four years ago? Even two he, years ago, he was good with the Marlins before they traded him. He sure was. They had an all-star that outfield. Was, Marcelo Zuna was out there. John Carlos Stanton was out there, yeah, and Yelich was out there. That was a sick outfield. Sick outfield. <laughs> I'm looking at you, people. That was a sick outfield. <laughs> and now. <laughs> I want winners. I do want winners. <laughs> it's just, I'm so, I'm sorry. I, all right, I, all right, I, all right. Fine, sorry. Let's let's, uh, let's change topics here. I, um, <laughs> hey, I, geez, we haven't man. Been, we haven't been keeping up to date with what the Flyers are doing. Oh, there you go. Let's go. Let's go. What do you got? What do you got on the Flyers there? <laughs> oh, I am pumped, man. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be honest with you, Chris. With the way the Phillies are playing right now, and the fact that the Eagles' season hasn't started yet, for sure. real, Why I'm not? excited for the Sixers and the Flyers to start up uh, as well. I can't wait till October. Oh man, can Dude. we can we please just announce the death of the Philadelphia Phillies season? Please let me do it. Please let me next, do it next week. Because, <sighs> like Max said, they are still in the wild card spot, man. even though they will get eaten alive. Mm. No, they won't. That's not true. Mm. You gotta remember, they still have the man Bryce Harper. They still have the man Reese Hoskins. They got guys that are gonna produce for us. I still have confidence in this team. I don't have too much confidence in the manager of this team. I, I didn't yeah, realize. We can all agree. With. I didn't realize how many more home runs Reese Hoskins ha- has over Bryce Harper. Because I'm pretty sure Hoskins is around 24. And has Harper hit 20 yet? Yes, he just yeah, hit 20. Har- Did yeah, he Harper just hit 20? 20. Oh man, I, I, I'm still sticking with my bold prediction that I said months ago. Scott Kingery is going to lead this team in home runs. Oh God, stop! <laughs> he's oh going my God, to. Let's he's, stop! He's Just stop right to. there. You, you, are you not watching the games, man? Reese Hoskins is going to lead the team in home runs. Hey Chris, before you say anything, Scott I play Kingery both sides. has what? <laughs> I play both sides. So <laughs> has Scott? I, I Scott Kingery is not going to lead the team love, in home runs. I would Chris. love to get a count on this. I I swear. I swear, every other game I see, ah, hey, update, Scott Kingery, solo home run. Because, you know, 
He's been playing lead off a lot, and no one gets on base ahead of him, so we just get one run in. I thought you guys were gonna talk about the Flyers. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Hey, I didn't start it. I, I tried. <laughs> he said I tried. I'm sorry. Look, they have not signed Ivan Provorov yet. Am I worried? Hell yes. That is the best defenseman the on this team. Now? They have not signed him yet. And I swear, if yeah, he, they, hold, they if he holds him. out, I am going to jump out of my room. They also have not signed Travis Konechny yet. Am I worried? Not as much as I am. I'm Provorov. worried. Travis Konechny is a good player. Travis Konechny is a great player. Why the hell are we re-signing guys like Scott Law and these losers? Scott <laughs> I Travis Konechny wow. could skate Scott circles Lawton. around Jesus, Scott Law. Max? <laughs> I don't know I'm about being that. blunt right now. He Scott, sucks. Scott Lawton is a solid player. No, dude. he's not. He is. He is. Konechny is a better he, goal scorer. Better. Okay, I'll agree with you. As Which far is what as we need. Offense, we don't score. As far as offense is concerned, we Travis got the goalie. Is a we have the goalie. Carter we need Hart. to score points. Carter Hart. Score goals. That's what Konechny does. Scott Lawton's a fourth line guy. You can just dra- drag him out of the back of a dumpster. Okay. <laughs> that's what okay. he is. <laughs> that, that's I've a watched sound him drop. for like. <laughs> that's a sound drop. I've watched him for how many years? How many years have I watched Scott Lawton? He in was drafted uniform? in 2012. Yeah, exactly. Too many. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he does his job well. Okay. Now, this is what I'm excited for. We got some solid upcoming rookie. Look, I did not agree with the Ron Hextall firing because he did. So- he got solid draft picks. He got solid prospects that he was letting marinate in the minors. And I think we're going to start seeing the fruits of Ron Hextall starting this year. As far as guys like Morgan Frost, who I think you will love. What's he play? The defenseman? He's he's a center. Okay, good. We need some offensive. We got listen, like I said, we got guys in free agency. We got defensemen. We made a couple of trades for from the Jets. Remember we got Scott what not Scott I, Braun. I Justin Braun. <laughs> it's Justin Braun. Justin Braun. Justin Braun. Okay, I know I know you I don't know about you. I know T doesn't like comparisons, but you wanna know who I have heard Morgan Frost compared to more than one time? Who? Sidney Crosby. Oh, stop. It's ridiculous. There's dude, one Sidney Crosby, I know there's man. one Sidney Crosby, but, dude, I'm telling you, Morgan Frost is sick. We built and this I team from the so goal, the goalie up to the defenseman, goalie. got some solid defensemen, some veterans we in here. Sure Niskanen, going to be good. Niskanen is going to be good. And then now we get we, some scoring, we, we need, and Konechny is one of those guys. We need to get Ivan Provorov signed because hey. if, we, if, this, if you don't have Ivan Provorov in this defensive core— that is like chopping the head I off agree of with the you. defense. I'd rather uh, give her to Shane Goss' pair. Real Gossespair. quick. Um, whoever I'm, said, I'm, I'm on board with that now. Now that we drafted Cam York, Shane Goss' pair is... And you can probably get something a, good for him. You sure can. Wait a minute. Yeah. Whoever said that the guys like Sidney Crosby... Okay, listen. Just, Stay off the weed! <laughs> please. All right? Come on. Oh, hey, stop it. I'm not the one who said that. I, just I'm i not the one who said that. I am just... What? <laughs> okay, and then another guy who doesn't have. Okay, Morgan Frost is like an eighty percent chance to make this team. The th- the reason it might be tough is because there's really only one spot open for the whole team. Who are centers right now besides Couturier? Couturier, uh, Hayes, the Patrick Hayes is going to be our second line center. Patrick's going to be third. Okay, and then so Lawton fourth. No. No, put Frost in there. Scott Long's put, horrible. Put Frost in there. I can't believe um, we resigned him, and we gave him like two million dollars, like legit two million. I, I, you think that's not a lot of money, T? That, you think that's not a lot of money? Two Let million dollars million to million me dollars. is a lot of money. <laughs> Look, all right. To Scott Lawton, I, we could have spent that on Scott, a couple of flights to uh, Scott, Vancouver or something. Two million dollars to me? No way. And then, and then another guy who doesn't have as good of a chance as Morgan Frost to make the team. But is still a solid player is Joel Farabee. He was our first round draft pick last year. Uh, he had a, he, he started out really slow with Boston University last year, but then he really got hot. And uh, as far as training camps concerned, uh, Morgan Frost and Joel Farabee have just been cl- making everybody look like clowns. We're going to be a better team this year. And we're uh, going to be a much better team as, this year. As far as those two guys, those are my two big guys to watch out for. As far as rookies that can make this team, Morgan Frost and Joel Farabee. I'm expecting big things from Carter Hart go this through, year. Go through real quick, because uh, Scott Lawton's the one name that I can't stand, but go through the left and right wingers real quick uh, for me. Uh, left wing, we got Giroux first. We got Good. Uh, Van Riemsdyk second. Good. Uh, ba ba Holy crap. Michael Raffle, I guess, third. Which? Uh, or no, Limblom. Oscar Limblom. Uh, Oscar Limblom's a solid player. You might not, you might uh, not think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would argue that... As far as defensive zone play, he I would say Oscar Lindblom is the second best player behind Sean Couturier. As far as defensive play. Can he score? 
No, he can't. That's he, what we he, need. We need scores. <laughs> wow. What do we got on the right wingers? What do we got on the right wingers? We got Jake Voracek. Good. We got Travis. Well, if we Travis sign Travis good. Connecting. I like Travis Connecting. Um The right wing, third line right winger spot is the spot that's kind of not filled right now. That is the one spot. You can move a guy like Lawton. I know, like I know you know don't like him. You can move a guy like Lawton to the wing to put in a guy like Frost. And then you got that Tyler Pitlick guy. That Michael Rossell is a, okay. I mean, I don't hate the guy. I've seen him do some things on the on the ice that I that I like. Oh as, yeah. As far as offensive and and he's not you know he's not going to be that big defensive presence. I mean, no. as a, as a winger, but he can he can score. I've I've seen him do some things. He 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 does kind of remind me of Scott Hartnell as far as not the falling down, but uh, as far as the driving the net and getting into the grills of goalies. And that's why I want him to do. So the guys that I'm looking forward to to see this year, I guess, because I don't watch too much preseason hockey, but no. I do want to check out Limblom and I do want to check out Law and just to see if they fit. Because listen, Giroux's a little bit older now. He's not going to be able to carry the load as much. Man. And Voracek, that top line is questionable, very questionable. It's old. It's kind of been the same for the last couple of seasons, and we haven't really made any strides to the playoffs. Voracek, mate. I mean, what are your thoughts on him? I am sick of Jake Voracek. Oh, He's a good man. player. I just don't know if it's the right fit. He's a good player, and you want to know what he is great at? Turning the puck over. He I, is I need to. Phenomenal I want to see him it. be more aggressive. And like he's a scorer, man. Go times, score the puck. There are times where he has this fire in his eyes, and he will go down and do something great. But seven times out of ten, when he tries to do something great, he's turning the puck over. Mm-hmm. That okay. He pisses me off. Right I, around the blue line. It's I, always around the blue line. I too. have a, I, I have a sign saying, "Hey, I will donate my car to take Jake Voracek to wherever he wants to go." <laughs> I will, I will drive him to the – I'll piggyback – I'll give him a piggyback ride to LA. Here's the problem. We don't have anybody to replace him, really, and we don't have too much money to spend on somebody because we, we just gave Kevin Hayes all that money yeah, for a guy who is not really a first-line dude. Yeah, he did – he certainly got a lot He's of money. But good, the thing is, first-line centers in the NHL nowadays are getting paid in the range of 10 to $12 million, which is why second-liners are now getting like seven. I mean, he's a good player. Look, he's an upgrade from what we had last year. Because, like, McDavid, easily. When's his contract half. His, They just signed all, him? He's already uh, signed. He's uh, $12.5 million. Uh, Anze Kopitar on the Kings is $11 million. Uh, Kopitar's old. Kopitar is old. But, man, he, he's a solid player still. Uh, you know, Kane, P- Patrick Kane, Jonathan Tays on Chicago, both ten and a half mil. Still? I mean, those guys are old, too. Mm-hmm. Kane is still sick. Yeah, T- he is. Taves has Taves dropped is off. Patrick Kane. You got to pay him just because of the cups they won. But I, literally, McDavid could have came into my office if I'm the GM of the Oilers and said, I want this money, and I would have said, okay, because he's I, by far the best player in the league dude, right now. Oh, I, I'm playing some in armchair. I'm, 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 pe- I'm playing some armchair GM. If I, I'm calling That's the dangerous. Oilers, it's never going to happen. This would never happen. But if, if it, in a perfect world, I would be like, hey, I will give you Jake Voracek, Shane Gostisbehere, couple prospects, two first, second, and a third for McDavid. I would give away all that for Connor McDavid. Well, then you're in, you're, uh, Dude, you're in trouble, though. You don't have any depth. That, Your depth is gone. No, but that's the thing. You're going to call guys Ron up Hextall, in the minors? That's what Ron Hextall did. Ron, there's a reason that this team is top five as far as farm systems go. Now, that is also we are based top five on right p- now? potential. Oh okay. my god, yes! Okay. Oh my god, yes! With really guys like Morgan Frost, Joel Ferry, there are other guys like German Rusov, uh, Isaac Ratcliffe, Matt Strom. These are all solid-looking guys as far as their ability to show that on the NHL. We just need a couple of them to exactly pop, you know. I, Isaac Ratcliffe. Oh, that's a that's another guy. He's not quite on the level of Frost or Faraby, but six foot six center, huge guy, and. Uh, as far as what I, I can see, he's a great scorer. Now, not to the level of Frost. Right. But, uh, bu- 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 and then on the defensive side, uh, they just drafted Cam York, who I like is Cam York, easily, player. Uh, you can easily replace Shane Goss' pair with him. Yeah. Uh, great point, guy. Well, I know, I know, I know. It's I good. Listen, know. listen, Chris, to wrap this up, man, it's going to be a fun season. I can't wait for it. Um, I really Hart. think we make the playoffs this year. I think we got a lot better. So, uh, T, let's shut it down. All right, y'all. Y'all missed any of this crazy episode, probably one of the craziest episodes we have ever had thus far. You can go to philly-experience.simplecast.com, download, rate, and subscribe. 
We are on Twitter at DPhillyEXP1 on Twitter. Download the episodes. Let us know how we doing. Talk to us. Do you hate us? Do you love us? Do you, would you like to see more rants? They love us, T. Don't what forget are you to tell about? them about our new time. Ah, yes. And in a couple of weeks, <laughs> we will be moving our time to Tuesdays at 8 a.m. So now you can catch us early in the morning on your drive in to work. Oh, thank you, Tanner, for reminding T to uh, explain that crucial detail of this show, this fine program that we have. It's a All fine right. program? It, this is it. All right, this guys, is- tune in next week. The Philly Experience Podcast. It's funny to me. Thank you for sticking around with us, guys. We'll All see right, you next week. Have a great week. Let's go uh, have a ham sandwich. I like him about an inch and a half thick. <laughs> <laughs>